Did you know that we walk on water? Beneath our feet, the soil and the rocks form a giant and dynamic network of underground waters. Let's go discover this fascinating, invisible world. This column was created in a laboratory. It's a simplified version of an underground environment. Inside, the glass marbles represent the solid part of the soil, or the rocks, while the spaces between the marbles are called pores. Water circulates through these pores, carrying with it elements in the solution, as shown by the dye. This oversimplified representation demonstrates how the irregularity of underground environments results in chaotic trajectories. In order to better understand how water infiltrates and replenishes the groundwater system, scientists spent a year tracking the movement of waters in the first meter of soil. At the beginning of the winter, rainwaters infiltrated the soil, causing a downward movement. By winter's end, the water table had started to rise again, and the soil was saturated not by rainwater, but by deep groundwater. We can also observe an ascending movement in this 120 meter deep borehole. Pressure causes underground water to flow out and up all year long. Let's dive further into this subterranean universe. Where does that orange color come from? When circulating deep underground, the water interacts with the rock and loads up on elements like iron. As it rises back up, that deep water runs into other waters coming from the surface, which are rich in oxygen. This combination produces iron oxides, which is what gives it this rust color. The orange hue disappears little by little, except at the level of some fractures. These zones where a lot of waters interact allow for the development of small bacterial colonies, whose environmental role remains largely unknown to this day. The underground world is therefore a very dynamic environment, where water infiltrates, flows laterally, mixes with other waters, but also resurfaces again. In nature, groundwater under pressure rises towards the surface, creating water sources and feeding into streams. These waters that resurface carry with them the trace of their path. In passing through the groundwater environment, these waters were warmed up and enriched with helium or radon in concentrations up to a thousand times higher than that of the surface waters. It's thanks to this particular characteristic that we can detect, above ground, the zones where the groundwaters resurface, and we can estimate the amount of time they spent underground. By the way, the water we drink is often much older than we are. Even with an increase in laboratory studies, fieldwork, as well as chemical and biological analyses, it's still difficult to represent this invisible environment in its entirety. That's why these numerical models use local observations in order to provide an overview of the underground environment. Take a look at this panorama of the Morbihan region. This model highlights the altitude of the top of the water table, scaled to the entirety of the watershed. Beneath this imaginary surface, the rock is filled with water. The level of the water table varies with space and time. In fact, the water table is sometimes flush with lower parts of the watershed at certain periods of the year, resulting in humid zones whose ground cover and vegetation change with the fluctuation of the water table. So you see, everything is connected. Groundwater is linked to climate, as well as to vegetation and rivers, and it even acts as a time capsule of past environments. Groundwater is not only an integral part of our environmental landscape, but it shapes this very landscape as well. When human activity disrupts the flow and the quality of groundwater, this can have repercussions on a local and global scale. These repercussions can only be predicted thanks to the visualization of underground environments. Ultimately, if we know how, where, and when to observe this underground world, is the universe beneath our feet really that invisible? <laughs>